Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com. It is Tuesday. It is the Tuesday edition of Today in Sports Betting. As always, we're going to break it into two separate shows. Part one, we're going to take a look at the NBA, and uh, I'm going to bring on my uh, my partner in crime. No further introduction necessary. It is Scott Reichel. Scott, what's up? Ready to do a little NBA, buddy? Uh, yeah, looking forward to it. I know yesterday uh, was a pretty solid day in sports all around for me. I know that we ended up disagreeing about the Thunder game. And we disagreed about I, – I forgot if we disagreed about anything else, but all I know is that NBA worked out pretty well for me yesterday. Some really bad teams in the bubble. And uh, we might yeah. be seeing the worst team of all uh, to start the uh, NBA card today. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I, was, uh, I went 4-2 and two yesterday. I did uh, lose. I lost the Thunder and the Lakers under. Everything else uh, came in pretty well for me, including that no-sweat victory there with the Heat. And the Raptors minus three and a half. So, yeah. oh, that was that was a complete sweat-free win. I, anytime you get fouled with less than a second left, it's it, there's no luck involved. It's pure skill. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so let's talk about that terrible team. Biggest spread that we've seen so far this season. Is the game that's going to kick off. It is the Milwaukee Bucks, arguably the one of the best teams on the bubble in the bubble, and the Brooklyn Nets, arguably one of the worst teams. Eighteen and a half. Is your number there, Scott? 229. You're going to get involved with this one? Well, this was my play of the day, uh, which I gave out last night. Uh, I took the Bucks minus 17 and a half. A couple reasons why. This Nets team that they're assembling for today's game only might be the worst basketball team I've ever seen. And this isn't an exaggeration. This isn't any whatever. If you look at who they have, their only players who are worth anything right now are Karis LeVert, Joe Harris, and Jared Allen. Those are the best three players right now in the bubble. They're not even that great to begin with. Karis LeVert's pretty good. But the Nets decided to bench all three of them today for rest. So their starting lineup is projected to be Chris Chioza, Tyler Johnson, Garrett Temple, Luau Cabarro, and Lance Thomas. That's their projected starting lineup. That might be the worst starting lineup I've ever seen in my lifetime in basketball. Yikes. So the Bucks are favored by – right now it's either 18 and a half or 19 where you look. And I know that Giannis might only play a half because they might bench everybody. I actually think the Nets are going to lose by 30. That is the worst lineup I've ever heard in my life. And I think that the Bucks bench might be better than that starting lineup. That is terrible. It's pretty awful. Pretty uh, – pretty, 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 pretty awful there. Right? I – I, there might have been some worse lineups with those uh, all-time inept Bobcats teams from maybe 10, 15 years ago. That against the Bucks off a loss, if you feel bad about it, you might be able to take the Bucks first quarter or first half. For the total, I can't touch it because even though the Nets like to play at a fast tempo now, I can't trust any of their players to actually make shots. Nobody on the Nets can stop Giannis. Giannis might actually have like 20 and 15 at the half. So I, I am going with the Bucks. Is it, is it possible to get backdoored? Maybe. But I really think talent-wise and disparity in that game, the Bucks should win by 30. Yeah, I worry about sucker games like that. I really do. Um, I, f- I felt that way until I saw the Nets projected lineup. It is just – that is so bad. You might throw what? a in there maybe as a starter, but that doesn't help much. You're putting Lance Thomas at the five. How are you supposed to stop Brook Lopez and Giannis? Mostly Giannis, of course. Yeah, I know. Lance you know what, Thomas is your center. You know, dude, I'm, I'm going to uh, – I can't do it. I can't, I can't lay that many points. I'm sorry. Um, look at the first half then? Uh, I'm going to go Milwaukee team total over. 125. Okay, that's fair. I'm going to play, I'm going to play the Bucks over 125. I, I just uh, – I don't I – don't, I have a lot more faith in them to, to get theirs as opposed to uh, not losing interest on defense in the second half. Yeah. I, the thing is that I don't even know if losing interest matters when the Nets are using a bunch of scrubs. Who it may not. It may not. And, you know, you could be, you could be good on that. I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't hate the play. I took it at 17 and a half because I knew the line was going to go up. And I, I expect the line to continue climbing. It's at 18 and a half now. Where do you think this will close? 20? Uh, like, what time I don't know who will be betting Brooklyn besides either contrarian betters or – some sharp contrarian betters. No one's well, betting the Nets. I don't think it'll make it to twenty. I think if it goes, I think if it goes to twenty, I think the, I think sharps get involved. Uh, I, 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 I think it's. Know. I think at some point it's going to get to twenty. 
but that's just it might it might i think it closes 19 19 and a half that's my that's yeah. my prediction and we're coming down the home stretch we've got what two and a half hours for game time so yeah i don't know we'll see they're just getting up and around in vegas next hour will let us know a lot mm-hmm. all, right, all right let's move on um to at least one competent team uh the mavs mavs kings Ma- uh, mavs minus five and a half 236 and a half is your betting total there uh scotty what are you thinking I said a competent team. Is there a competent team? Because the Kings have been awful, and the yeah. Mavericks are great when they go up, before they go up double digits, and then they fall apart after that. Weird thing, yes. Uh, if I had twenty four, I'm leading the over. Uh, What's two, that? Six and a half. I know that some money has come in on the under, but if you've looked at how Sacramento and Dallas have played defense since the bubble restart, it's a trick question. Neither of them plays any defense. I, I think that Dallas could easily end up scoring 130 points again. Sacramento gave up, what, 130-plus to Orlando? Yeah. It's it's just a matter of Dallas doesn't play much defense. The Kings are still very young, so they're going to be willing to go up and down the court at a fast pace. And Dallas is a very solid offensive team. Just defensively, they're a joke. So, for that reason, I can see both teams getting into the 120s. I yeah, I'm with, I'm with you on that. I don't. It's a high total, but, man, these teams are just have too many holes on defense. They just, they just don't bear down enough. Um, yeah, I'm going to go the over 236.5 on that one as well. Um, Clippers Suns. Clippers home team here, allegedly. Uh, minus 9, 230.5. Um, you know, I just I, – I don't know that I have – I don't know that I believe the Clippers are going to play solid basketball for 48 minutes. I believe they might play good basketball for about 32 minutes, and I don't know if that keeps us at the 9 or not. Um I kind of feel the same way. The main issue I have with the Clippers is motivation. Of course, they're going to try to stay in the two spot, but the Lakers officially clinched the number one seed in the Western Conference yesterday. Right. So I'm not really sure what the Clippers are playing for at yeah. this point because since there is no home court, does it really matter if you're the two or the three? Of course not because you're playing in a neutral site no matter what. So right. you can make the argument the Clippers might just pack it in and rest everybody. and then It only rest. it only matters who you're going to match up with. If, there, if there's some weird bad matchup at the – you know, the this, this six or seven that you don't want to face. You know, but the point is that you're relying on an upset that you can't predict right now. True. So True. it – plus, if you look at the Western Conference, anybody really afraid of the – who's the eight now? The Grizzlies? Could be potentially the Trailblazers, but th- that's going to go to the Lakers. And then seven and eight is – I don't really think that there are many great teams at the bottom of the Western Conference. So I think the Clippers could either, A, try to, you know, keep it together, try to keep the chemistry there, or which I think is completely there after you beat the Pelicans by, by about 40, or you just pull the plug on people and say, all right, we'll just get them for the playoffs and we'll figure it out. So I'm not sure how they're going to divide up the minutes. I'd probably take Clippers first half, because even though Phoenix has looked a lot better in the bubble, they did fall behind double digits to the Mavericks in the first half of that respective game, and the Clippers just set the franchise record for the biggest uh, halftime, uh, say, margin, uh, leading margin uh, in their last game. I'd probably take the Clippers in the first half. All right, I'm, I'm just going to take the motivated team there. I'm going to give a small lean to Phoenix. Um, I, I don't love it. I'm, I'm avoiding that like the plague. But I, I just, I, I'm going to pass on that game entirely, but I – for the sake of the show. Yeah, it, that's why for the, for the sake of the show, I'll take the first half because I really think the Clippers, when they play, uh, pretty much everybody except, of course, the people that are currently absent from the bubble, they're just so much better than Phoenix. Yeah, so, I know. Oh, no, I know. I know. I totally agree. I totally agree. kind of just relying on them to take their pedal off, to take their foot off the pedal in the fourth yep. quarter. So. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it, 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 a true matchup, 100% with these teams going at it. Uh, it's a different situation. But yeah, I think so for that reason, I'll take the first half because I think that even if the Clippers decide to rest people, they'll keep yeah. George and Leonard in for the entire first half. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Celtics Heat. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Magic Pacers. Uh, Magic minus one and a half. Uh, Pacers uh, 225 on this one, Scott. What do you think? I really don't have much of a thought on this matchup. I guess if I was leaning to anybody, I would lean Orlando because Indiana played yesterday. So you got to wonder about the rest advantage for Orlando in this one. Right. I'm a little bit concerned with the injury to Jonathan Isaac. I know that he didn't exactly make the biggest impact coming off the bench since he returned from injury, but defensively he might be the only good defender that Orlando has. And he's now not in the fold as he ended up suffering a torn ACL, so he's going to be out for a long time. Yep. But 
I don't know if Brogdon's playing for Indiana. I expect Oladipo to be back because he didn't play yesterday for rest. I don't know if anybody can stop TJ Warren right now. He has looked like a man possessed in the ball. Monster. Monster. He's an absolute monster. There's really no other way to put it. I'm going to lean to Indiana. I know that the re- I just said all that stuff about the rest advantage. I wouldn't play this personally. But with Oladipo not playing yesterday and with the way Warren's been playing and how Orlando is no one ball defenders to speak of whatsoever, I think Indiana might be a bad matchup for my for the magic. Yeah, um yeah, I, I agree. I'm going to uh I'm gonna I'm gonna it's play really this tough game. though. Like this is one of those lines at one and a half where you look at it and go, that looks kinda right to me. I really don't see much of an edge on either side. So you can you can argue about the total, but I'm worried about the dead legs in the second half for Indiana. So I'll lean to the Pacers anyway, just because I think they're the better overall team. But it, it's really not a great spot for either side. I'm playing the over here. Uh, it's my it's my play of the day. I like I like what this Pacers team has done lately, and uh, Magic uh, overs cashed eleven straight. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ride the streaky team. They were they were streaky under at the beginning of the year. Uh, up until up until uh, around the first of the year, they were giving up less than 100 points a game. That's that's the weirdest turnaround. The magic defense, you know, where they were just mm-hmm. locked down, and now they've just disappeared. Um, I, I, again, I, I like what this Pacers team has done. Uh, if it wasn't a back-to-back, I'd, I'd back the Pacers for sure here. But it's uh, a good thing that Oladipo didn't play yesterday, so he will be playing today. So that even though it is a back-to-back, they did manage <laughs> some people's minutes, so that kind of helps limit the damage of a back-to-back. So. Yeah. Going, I'm going over to a 225 POD there for me. All right. Um, Celtics Heat. Celtics minus three and a half. Heat. Uh, 20 and a half is your total there. Tell me something good. I think this game's absolutely brutal to predict. Uh, I know that the total has dropped from 223 and a half to 220 and a half. So there has been, I'm assuming, sharp money because I don't know what public is going to be betting unders in basketball games nowadays. Yeah, that's the only, that's the only real move that we've had today, by the way. This yeah, evening. so – I guess I'm leaning to the under. I was right yesterday about the Heat Raptors under, which was pretty much sweat free. So I was I was right about that when I backed the line movement there. But Miami did play yesterday in a nail biter. Boston did not. Has Boston really impressed me in the bubble? No. Anytime you almost blow a 24 point lead, well, they did blow a 24 point lead to Portland before holding on. They lost to the Bucks before that. I still think it was a charge on Giannis. So I'm not really gonna blame the. Uh, Really no such thing. Yeah, that's the point, is that Giannis would have fouled out. Uh, Marcus Smart, I thought, drew a charge. They ended up overturning the call but through review, which I thought was questionable. So I thought Boston arguably should have won that first game against Milwaukee. But I guess I'm leaning to Boston because of the spot, playing it back-to-back and after a very competitive game against Toronto. Not really a big fan of that spot for Miami. But if I was going to lean anywhere, I would probably lean to the under because I feel like the line movement so far in the bubble has been pretty spot on the majority of the time. And I uh, can see Miami being a very solid defensive team that is a little bit short on gas offensively after playing yesterday. So I'll lean to the under, but I have not been impressed with Boston's defense since the restart. So it's a pretty tricky spot. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't really want to get involved in this one. I'll lean, I'm going to lean under as well, just back the, just back the move there. Um, all right, Rockets Trailblazers, Rockets four. Speaking of unders, we got the uh, the Rockets Trailblazers, right? Total of two forty five. Uh, I got it at two forty three right now. In fact, it's come down a little bit. Oh, now it's back to two forty four and a half. Good lord, that was just from the time I did this. Okay, so that's uh, speaking of good defensive teams. Uh, yeah. yeah, we got a total of two forty four. Um, you know, the, this the Rockets team shot sixty three threes last time, buddy. Um. Uh, I thought it was 61, but either way, it was tied for the most in NBA history. Most in NBA history. I'm, I'm not going to uh, – I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play an over. I'm going to play an over when a team's launching that many threes. I'm sorry. It's just uh, they're, not get, they're not getting second chance points, um, not killing the clock. They're, going, they're, that's, they're one dimensional. They're one and a half dimensional at this point. Um, I'm going to play the over. Well, you know, whatever over. they're doing apparently works. Uh, that's, that's what's weird if they're just playing – I still have no faith in it during the playoffs once the refs actually start swallowing their whistles a little bit more, which seems to always be the undoing of the Rockets in the playoffs. But good for them. I didn't think they'd beat Milwaukee, and they did. What are you doing here? Uh, this is a pretty tough one. For me, even though 
I was impressed with the Rockets beating Milwaukee. I really think that this short of a line makes me believe that the Trailblazers are the move. Houston opened up at roughly minus five, then down to roughly minus four. It yeah. still happens on the spots. I like Portland on the money line here. And the main reason why is because of the fact that if you look at how many seven-footers Portland actually has, they're going to eat Houston. Houston had a rebound differential against Milwaukee. I think it was like negative 26 or something. It was the largest in a win in the history of the sport. Wow. And Portland has Nurkic, who's looked insane since he came back from injury. They got Zach Collins, who I'm not a big fan of as a player, but he's also a seven-footer. So you got them. You got Whiteside in there, who I don't think is a good player, but he's a good rebounder. I don't know how Houston is supposed to rebound in this game. And Lillard has been playing some of the best basketball in his career. The two plays are the two leans I'd give out. I'd give out Portland money line because I think that that line is very trappy. Because you know that they're just daring the public to take Houston with a line like that. They just beat Milwaukee. They beat Dallas. Two right. primetime games. Everyone watched it. People were impressed with Houston. Oh, you're laying four against the 10 seed in the West. That right. looks a little bit sketchy to me. And the second reason because, is thing that I like, I like Lillard over in points because he despises Westbrook and it seems like he tortures, he tortures Westbrook every time they play. So I guess my two thoughts are Portland money line and Lillard over in points. I don't know what the over is, probably around 31 if I had to guess. Uh, it's 28 and a half actually on FanDuel over. For Lillard? Yeah, I don't know who can guard Lillard on the Rockets, and Lillard seems to try to go the extra mile against Westbrook just to embarrass him. I think Lillard's going to go for 30-plus, and I think Portland's going to win this game. So those are my thoughts on the game. Am I going to play anything? No. Maybe if you want to go for a money line parlay with some dogs, I would recommend Portland. Wouldn't you agree that long line looks a little bit trappy? Yeah. And like seed only being four-point uh, underdogs against the arguably the third-best team in the Western Conference? Yeah, I completely agree with that. It's uh, they are they are daring you to take it. I think I think I don't. If you're gonna play that, I like the the Portland money line uh, plus one fifty. That's uh yeah that that was yeah that's how I feel. <clears throat> that's solid. Um, again, I like I like the over there. I just I'm just gonna you know a catch it and chuck it team shooting that many threes. I'm gonna I'm gonna. I think off. that was the thing that I was wondering about was that the total is so high that if this game ends up let's just say one twenty to one fifteen Trailblazers. Do I think Lillard's going to score more than 28 points if, the, if Portland scores 110-plus? The answer is yes. I, I just think Lillard's going to go for 30-plus if, if this game's going to go close to going over. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, kind of, that's solid. Yeah, so I feel like I have more outs if I just take the lower team uh, personal player prop over instead of the full game over because even if it is somewhat on the low-scoring side at 220, then I still have faith in Lillard dropping 30-plus. All right. Good enough. All right, buddy. There you go. That's uh, six more in the bank for today. We'll see what happens. Got an early, uh, got a little, uh, got a little afternoon delight there with the with the Bucks and the Nets. I don't know if that counts as delight. I'm a Nets fan who has money against the Nets, so read that into it as much as you want. But if if you're in the live, uh, if you're in the live betting business and they have live player props for over unders, you might want to consider taking unders with Giannis mid game because I'm assuming that the live lines are not going to adjust for Giannis not playing the entire fourth quarter. Do you agree with that? Yes. If you see him at like 15 points, yes. and the live bet is like 30, and it's the start of the third quarter. Oh, yeah. Is what, like eight minutes to put up 15 points? I think, I think you're dreaming. I think you're living in dreamland. Thinking that's I'm mentioning happen. hypotheticals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, it's, if, it's some, if it's the beginning of the second half and it's double the total of his first half and he's had a decent, you know, double-digit first half, yeah, play all kinds of unders. But, you know, especially if they're owning him. Yeah. They're not, they not going to play him any more than they have to in this game. I also wouldn't consider playing any bucks if you're in the daily fantasy business. I know that Giannis might put up insane numbers in the first half, maybe a triple-double early on. But can you really spend a decent – I'd say he's going to be the most expensive guy on the board. And I'll just be real. Can you really spend the – a decent portion of your budget for a guy that you know everybody else is going to have and for a guy who might only play 24 minutes, the answer is no. You're probably better no. off taking either Harden or Lillard who yeah, are going to play that's, that's 
40 plus minutes. That's a losing move right there. Absolutely. I agree. Mm-hmm. All right, buddy. Well, uh, you know what? Let's just do a baseball show. What, what, what do you say? Uh, sounds good to me. All right. So you guys, uh, good luck on all your NBA plays today. As always, we appreciate you stopping by and checking us out. Don't forget to check out winnersandwinders.com for deep dives into these games and every game on the board every single day. Uh, you get over there one time, you'll like it, you'll dig it, I promise, all right? Winnersandwinders.com, our sister site, statsalt.com. Uh, I am Scott Steen. He is Scott Reichel. This is the NBA portion of Today in Sports Betting. Thanks very much for watching. Good luck on all your plays today, and uh, we'll see you on the baseball side. Take care.